Gentleman yields back, Mr. Stubbe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the majority starts the hearing with the lie that there's a constitutional right to killing unborn children. There never has been that right, and nowhere in our founding documents or the Constitution does a constitutional right exist to murder an unborn child. In fact, the opposite is present, and Mr. McClintock touched on it, but I'm gonna elaborate. In the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendment to the Constitution, there is a constitutional right for any person to not be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, in two different amendments. Certainly, an unborn child is a person. I'm not sure what else it would be. Um, and I'm, I, I'm tested to see if the other side's going to ignore the science that the child in the womb is not a person. Therefore, that person shall not be deprived of life pursuant to our Constitution, and certainly not the opposite where they can be murdered. And there's been a lot of talk today about freedom. And there is no freedom to murder an innocent life, a person that was duly recognized under our Constitution. And the majority of the Supreme Court made this clear in stating, and I quote on page 25 of the opinion, its inescapable conclusion is that a right to abortion is not deeply rooted in the nation's history and traditions. On the contrary, an unbroken tradition of prohibiting abortion on pain of criminal punishment persisted from the earliest days of the common law until 1973. And then on page 69 of the opinion, they hold. We therefore hold that the Constitution does not confer a right to abortion. Roe and Casey must be overruled and the authority to regulate abortion must be returned to the people and their elected representatives. Since Roe v. Wade, over 63 million children have been slaughtered in an incorrectly decided decision. But finally, the issue has been returned to the elected representatives where it belongs, to right this wrong and give back the right to life guaranteed to every person in our Constitution. And we should be thankful today for the Supreme Court's decision in Dobbs and everyone who made it possible, and that includes our witness today, Mrs. Foster. And I wanna thank you for your commitment to life and the work that led to the decision in Dobbs. And I wanna personally thank you for your courage for being here. Uh, I wanna thank you, and, and, and I know it's tough up here, but know that hundreds of millions of Americans stand behind you, that we're praying for you, and that there is a large amount of support out there for you. And I had a list of questions for you, but a couple of questions ago, um, Mrs. Scanlon leveled a host of inaccurate disinformation about pregnancy centers. And so I would like to give you the remaining time that I have left if you would like to respond to any of that, or I can ask you the questions that I have for you, whichever direction you would like to go. Um, there's a lot I would like to respond to. You've got two um, minutes and 16 seconds to respond. Great, yeah. Uh, first, Representative Scanlon um, seems to be almost talking about Planned Parenthood when she's talking about, about pregnancy centers. Uh, deceptive, well-funded, coercive, that defines Planned Parenthood and it defines big abortion. Um, and, and it seems to be to me that she's getting her information from the same place that... Um, that a previous representative did on her info about my organization because in fact we don't take a stance on contraception. Um, so that would be um, something that I would certainly um, recommend looking further into. Um, but then further than that, um, preteen pregnancies they are high risk and they fit the life exception. And so that isn't actually an abortion because the primary intent is to save the girl's life. An abortion is the intentional ending of a human life in the womb prior to birth and that's not what would be going on there. Um, but I ask really, how do we know about this little girl? Instead of re-victimizing her in front of the nation, here in Congress, on C-SPAN, why aren't we talking about the real issue here? Why aren't we talking about rape? Why aren't we talking talking about holding her rapist accountable. Instead, um, abortion and rape are both um, symptoms of the same violent ideology that says that we can violate others to achieve our own goals and fulfill our own desires. And I work alongside people who have experienced the most horrific um, sexual violence imaginable, and they understand that transcending these ills and overcoming them starts by refusing to perpetuate or to justify further violence. That is what this hearing should be about. We should be talking about that. We should be talking about helping women, giving women the resources that that we need. Um, we need to be talking about how we can work together in a bipartisan way to help our nation's people, to help all Americans and make sure that we all have equal rights, equal human dignity, and instead we're just, you know, casting stones and, and, and throwing spears and trying to, and trying to, to intimidate the Supreme Court into, um, into regretting a decision that is completely constitutional and restores America's most fundamental human right to life.
Thank you for being here today. I yield back. Gentlemen.